Hello people, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. My topic for today is George Fox. And I look at the life of George Fox from the time he was born, his ministry, the persecutions he encountered up to the time that he died. And his life goes like this. George Fox was born in the strongly Puritan village of Drayton in the clay, his sister Cher, England, as the eldest of four children of Christopher Fox, a successful weaver called Righteous Christa, and his wife Mary Lego in the year 1624. And driven by, the, by his inner voice, uh, Fox left Dray, Drayton in the clay in September uh, 1643 and moved towards London in a state of mental torment and confusion. And so uh, Fox left Drayton in the clay uh, in 1643 as a result of the conviction that he felt in his heart and he moved towards London uh, during that year and after almost a year he returned to Drayton where he encountered a person by the name Nathaniel Stevens the clergyman of his hometown in long discussions on religious matters and Stephen considered Fox to be a gifted young man but the two disagreed on many issues that he later called for mad and spoke against him. So Nathaniel Stephen at first uh, considered uh, Fox to be very gifted uh, because he had so many, he was very potential uh, in terms of preaching. And later on, the two gentlemen disagreed on various occasions and uh, Nathaniel Stevens uh, called Fox to be a madman and he spoke badly about him and over the next few years Fox continued to travel around the country at, ty at times he actively sought the company of clergy but found no comfort from them as they seemed unable to help to help with their matters troubling him. So he was trying his best to find solutions in the clergy, but he could not find any solutions. They could not help him. So he felt so discouraged. And in Wa uh, for example, in Wa Wiksha, one advised him to take tobacco, uh, which uh, Fox did not like and uh, to sing psalms. Another one in Coventry lost his temper when Fox accidentally stood on, on a flower in his garden and a third suggested bloodletting. So Fox was very discouraged because he could not find any solutions from the clergy he was very disillusioned because of their attitude towards him and also he did not like some of the advices that that he was given and so he was fascinated by the bible which he studied kingly and hoped to find among the english dissenters a spiritual understanding absent from the established church but he fell out with one group uh, that uh, e.g. because he, con he maintained that women had souls so he was very fascinated by the teachings of the bible and he thought he thought that since women are people they have souls too 
So they needed to be included. And he thought uh, intense, intensely about the temptation of Christ, which he compared to his own spiritual condition, but he drew strength from his conviction that God would support and preserve him. So he, he was thinking so much about the temptations that Jesus Christ encountered with the devil, and he thought about his, his own spiritual condition, and he thought that God would, would, would be able to, to support him and preserve him. So the ideas of, Steve, of George Fox were, rituals can be safely ignored as long as one experiences a true spiritual conversion. Number two, the qualification for ministry is given by the Holy Spirit. Anyone has the right to minister, assuming the Spirit guides them, including women and children. So, anyone can uh, can the, the qualification of one to be in a ministry has to be from the Holy Spirit, and that it doesn't it includes anyone as long as one was guided by the Holy Spirit, included women and children. Number three, God dwells in the hearts of his obedient people. Number four, Fox reasoned that because God was within the faithful, believers could follow their own inner guide rather than rely on a strict reading of scripture. So, Fox uh, argued that God was within people who are faithful and that uh, believers will follow their own inner convictions rather than strictly uh, following and reading the scriptures. Number five, Fox made no clear distinction between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In 1647, Fox began to preach publicly in marketplaces, fields, appointed meetings of various kinds, or even some, sometimes in step, steepled houses after the service. So, uh, Fox began to preach in public places in that year after the service was done, so that people would, so that people would be saved and his powerful preaching began to attract a small following. That is, at first they called themselves children of the light or friends of the truth, and later simply friends. And at Derby in 1650, he was imprisoned for blasphemy. That is, uh, a judge mocked a uh, fox exhortation to tremble at the word of God, calling him and his followers quackers. So the judge uh, mocked uh, Fox because Fox told him to tremble at the at God's word, and as a result of that, he was imprisoned in 1615. So he encountered so many persecutions, and in 1653. 52. In 1652, uh, Fox preached for several hours under a walnut tree at Balby, where his disciple Thomas Aldam, Aldam was instrumental in setting up the first meeting in the Doncaster area. And in the same year, Fox felt that God led him to ascend Pendle Hill, where he had a vision of many souls coming to Christ. So, uh, Fox felt that uh, God was telling him to go to, to that city or that place where uh, he had a vision that uh, many souls would come to Christ, many souls would be saved, many souls would would yearn to to know God, to know Christ as their personal savior. And 
he was imprisoned in 1653 in Carlisle for blasphemy. He was also imprisoned in London in 1654, uh, Long Caston in 15, 15, uh, 1656, Lancaster in 1660, Leicester in 1662, Lancaster again, and Scarborough in 1654 to 1666, and Orchester in 1673 to 1675. So, Fox encountered so many persecutions during his, his ministry. He was imprisoned so many times in different places and the man had to endure so many trials in his life. And Fox married Margaret Fell of Swarthmore Hall, a lady of high social position and one of his early converts on the 27th October 1669 at a meeting in Bristol and in 1671 Fox recovered and Margaret was released by the order of the king and Fox resolved to visit the English settlements in North America and the West Indies remaining there for two years to counter any remnants of Herod's teachings so whenever he would see any remnant of Perot's uh, teaching that year he would remain he would visit those places to see whether there were any remnants there and in the last years of his life Fox continued to participate in London meetings and still made representations to Parliament about the suffering of friends and two days later, after preaching at the Grace Church Street Meeting House in London, uh, he died between 9 and 10 p.m. on 3rd January 1690. And he was in, interred uh, three days later in the Quaker burying ground in the presence of thousands of mourners. So George Fox lived a legacy in his ministry. He endured so many persecutions in his life. He reached out to various souls uh, in his life during his ministry. And if you've learned something about the life of George Fox, you can comment down below. And if you have any other, if you want to add something about the life of George Fox, you can also comment and have a good day.